Jean-Louis Rodrigue y Christophe Conrad, cofundadores de Alexander TechWorks, son dos de los entrenadores de actuación más aclamados y expertos en rendimiento de la industria. Con 34 años de experiencia, han trabajado y capacitado a grandes actores, actrices y personajes importantes como Leonardo DiCaprio, Juliette Binoche, Christian Bale, Josh Brolin y Chris Pine, entre otros. Alexander TechWorks ofrece clases privadas, clases grupales continuas y talleres intensivos especializados a lo largo de los Estados Unidos, especialmente en Santa Mónica, Los Ángeles, Hollywood, Nueva York y también en Canadá e internacionalmente. Recientemente viajaron a la CDMX e hicieron de la Fraternidad de la Universidad de la Comunicación la sede perfecta para presentar los talleres de Embodying the Character y Animal Workshops que trabaja la creación de personajes y apropiación de actitudes y movimientos de ese nuevo ser que están por interpretar. Yo soy Nicole Espósito y en este momento nos encontramos en la UC con Jean-Louis Rodríguez y Christoph Conrad, dos coaches actorales que han entrenado a grandes personalidades del cine como lo son eh, Leonardo DiCaprio, eh, Margot Robbie, entre muchos otros actores. Hace unos días dieron un workshop en la fraternidad en alianza con la Universidad de la Comunicación en donde les enseñaron a los actores a realmente transformarse en un personaje a través del estudio de los animales. Um, hey, uh, well, I would like to know in um, general terms about this workshop. I don't know who would like to start. Okay. I'm the younger one, so that... <laughs> um, I am uh, an actor as well, you know, so it's, um, it's very in important to me, especially because I work in television and film mostly, um, that you are creating a characters who are living, breathing human beings. And uh, it's um, the quality that, that appears on the screen Um, it's very lifelike, it's very believable, um, and I think that a lot of times as an actor we try to create the characters and we go and we do a lot of research and sometimes we get trapped into our heads in the ideas what it is and I think that the animal actually helps us to put those ideas in your body uh, in such a way that we kind of take away the judgment first and allow ourselves to explore a lot and find the instinct and, and find the free impulses that are occurring in our body because also as a, as a base for, for this workshop that we do, we really take actors into the place where they feel very much open, available, and, um, and create that kind of instrument that then it's very easy to be influenced or to have a response that are uh, uh, very of the moment. Okay, so um, this workshop uh, has more of a physical approach rather than an um, intellectual process. Right. Uh, well, there's three elements that we work on. Uh, there's something called the Alexander Technique, which deals with using your body in the most effective way. Uh, what we want to try to do is take as much of the tension out so the voice, the breath, and the movement is as authentic as possible. So in a way, the character gets to live in the body of the actor, right? So uh, most of the actors that we work with are um, experienced and they, have, they know what they're doing. We don't have to teach them what to do. But what they're looking for is a way of communicating the character in a very new way, in a in a exciting and energetic way. So we can do it through helping them get rid of tension through the Alexander Technique. But then we uh, get them to use animals. So 
when uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, for example, in J. Edgar Hoover, that's a movie that I, that I helped him, he started, the character started when he is 20 years old and ends when he's in his 70s. So I had to map out the aging process. So the animal really helped him get that aging process in his body and uh, it was more effective. Or, for example, um, Margot Robbie, when she was in Itonia, uh, Margot is very um, uh, slight and small and thin, very slim. And uh, Antonia Harding is, what, is very muscular and kind of heavy in her behavior. So she, we needed something that would allow that to happen. So uh, she used a horse. So the horse really helped her be definitely much more grounded and heavier. Well, I find that um, very interesting. I would like to know for how long have you been studying and teaching this technique? And how did you find out um, that actors actually needed to learn this to um, develop in a better way? Or what do you think was lacking um, Um, at the moment um, in actors preparation what do you think was missing or how do you think uh, why do you think this is important for actors too you know maybe I can say uh, I mean I'm an actor and I was trying to figure out there was I, I think when you are in a school acting school you learn the techniques but in the end you are not acting technique You can't act technique. You have to be a human being, right? Like you are learning how to sing, for example, the technique in singing, but then the emotions and everything else has to come up, uh, come out. Otherwise, it's it's just not going to be very interesting. So um, I got interested in Alexander technique when I was uh, living in Los Angeles. I'm from Poland originally, um, and I was working on the movie and and. You know the, the tensions. Uh, there was some fight on the like stage fight and all of those uh, things that were occurring, and I was complaining about lower back and something else. And and the, the, the director said, "Do you know about Alexander technique?" And I said, "Well, I don't know it, what it is." And um, so then I went and uh, and find out and what Alexander technique helped me with is to find the distribution of effort in my body it's like if you are a musician and you are playing violoncello cello, right before you can play any music even if you are the best musician in the world you will tune it up that's what for example Alexander is for me as an actor to tune up to take a moment and connect to myself like animals do if they go to hunt like lionesses right they kind of sit and they just watch where are the animals how far are they uh, you know how close can we come up so if we start running full speed we have the best chance of getting actually dinner right <laughs> so all of those things it kind of became very um, interesting to me to make it practical for myself as an actor and um, and the animal is something so the Alexander is something the basic understanding how to get rid of the enemy number one of an actor which is the excessive tension because it's influencing your your breath and everything else um, and then on top of that what animals We start. I had animals in my school, but it was not very well developed. I did not how to, didn't enjoy really how, didn't know how to put it together. But with Jean Louis, actually, he was already doing that, and we then start working together and um, developed our own way of 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 really approaching uh, this whole work, which allows you to go into place of non-judgment and allows you to find some kind of think for example if you are a, if you are a um, a, um, a lion right how do you look around right what do you see or if you are a, a mouse you know it's a whole different you know different energy those are the very um, immediate connections to our body 
animals and us, we have the same. The, the body, it's what we have the most immediate connection. And that's what helps us to really find the freedom in expressing, not judging from the beginning, oh, I wouldn't do that, oh, no, that's too much. You don't know until you start playing around with it. And then you can make it less or make it more, but, but it's an opening the door process. This might be interesting for the people watching that uh, we use the study of animals so we can actually become more human. So it's not that we are animals as we're acting, but what we do is we study the, uh, the behavior and the movement of the animal f to find the character and then what we do is we diminish or we, uh, uh, I use percentages, so finally we'll have only about 10% of the animal, so it's, it, and sometimes less, and it is having the attention of a lion, for example, or having the aggression of a crocodile, or having the playfulness of a monkey, right? And, but, the way animals do it is that they're authentic. You see, it's not, put, it's not like putting a costume on, but it's actually about finding this energy that is completely out of the ordinary. So if you think of all the great actors right now, if you think about Margot Robbie, Leonardo DiCaprio, Meryl Streep, all these people are using from time to time animals to base their characters on. Well, um, that's really interesting. Um, I would like to know also if you complement um, this workshop with other technique or is it more focused on Alexander? You know, the Alexander, it's a basic understanding of how to redistribute the effort so you have much more ease in expressing whatever is going on. Bringing animals to something, it's like a tool. We are not teaching Meisner technique, we are not teaching um, method or some other techniques that are out there, right? Those are people go to those, 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 uh, those uh, schools and in the end you are learning something and in the end, some, uh, uh, being an actor, what works for me, it's a lot of times I take something from here, something from there, and something from, from somewhere else. Because it has to be your own process. It cannot be somebody else's process, right? The most important thing is whatever you are engaged, whatever, if it's an animal that you are choosing and, 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 and uh, playing around with it, if it's, we also enc encourage people to gather the images, like if you are working on some character or scene or movie, images that start to kind of, you walk around and some, something starts talking to you, maybe a color, maybe a shape, maybe a flower, maybe something else. And, um, and uh, bringing a music that may inspire your, uh, your uh, character to um, behave a certain way or support the energy of the character, right? And then bringing those two things together and what happens is that you find the freedom, you find almost like a glue. You find like the ocean. Sometimes I say, you know, you, a character, you are like a fish in the ocean. And the ocean is all of that. It's the animals. It's the, the, my point of view of the world, right? My point of view of somebody else, you know, of, of the, my character, of some other characters. So um, it's, it's allowing all of those components to come and start to influence you so you can be very at ease in accepting certain things because there's nothing worse when you see somebody acting, right? Because it's like you can't believe it, right? Overthinking or or even uh, or the movement, something that they are doing that you say, I don't believe that. And if you don't believe that, the behavior that it's there, then you can't lose yourself in the story either right so it's 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 really a lot of different things that starts to 
almost creating an ocean that you swim in, the air that you breathe, you know, that kind of, so it's a lot of different things that we are taking and allowing to come in. I don't tell people, don't use that, don't use some, no, bring it in and see how it's going to fit and how is it going to make you better, um, expressing better the character. I work with actors trained in many different ways. So what I have to do is I have to be able to collaborate with the uh, actors and sometimes with the directors. So it's about collaboration and uh, being able to respond in many different ways. The thing that's f uh, basic to what our training is that we're teaching actors to know their habits and that's the Alexander technique it's really a way of looking at your own use of yourself understanding uh, the literally the anatomical uh, use of your body and breath and energy and using it the best possible way in your performance you see and the animal work is is really an interesting and unique thing. I don't think we're the only... Yeah, uh, we're not the only one that, that do this. Uh, uh, there's a great teacher in London that does this. There's... and it's been taught in Europe, uh, all over Europe, so it's, it's not unique to us. Uh, I think we've developed a way of doing it that um, somehow we've gotten really positive responses from actors. Add something. One of the, um, I think, one of the um, very important elements in the in the, in expressing the character in, in its breath, and I feel that as being living in big cities, being so you know having all the gadgets in your hands, right? Everything is somewhere here. We somehow become less and less expressive. And, um, bre and the breath, it's an expression of your emotions as well. It's a vehicle for your emotions. So what I see that a lot of times, because we become rigid or we collapse or we hold ourselves too tight, right? That we start to interfere with our breath. And the breath, it's what moves everything. So the breath, it's what expresses also the sound and the sound is, so connected to expressing who that person is as it's speaking or singing, for example, right? So it's, it's, it's a very subconscious, it's an energy thing that starts to move something in. And I think that the breath and working on that, on, on developing that ease of expressing, of, uh, of, of understanding that your body, it's your, your, cello right that you are playing in and finding the the the, the tuning up understanding how to tune up uh this this uh, instrument and then stepping in and there is better music that is coming out of your of you it's 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 just uh, much more interesting what's happening unpredictable you know because there's also it's there's no fun if there's you're looking at something and you know where I, where where they are going you know what they are what what's next thing that is going to happen and especially in acting for film you really one of the principles you you shouldn't know what's your next line right because we are influencing each other so being present in your body being open being connected to everything that you can possibly incorporate in your acting to be in that moment um, and then not knowing what's next that's scary sometimes but it's it's good we try to really play with actors with that because it's very important because that's life, right? it's always unexpected and that should be acting, like right. living in the moment. Um, and it should, well, it should look like that, it should look like that on the screen, right? And it's also, as you are in film school, you know that the director is the one that is telling the story. And they may even change the order of the scenes, right? To kind of tell better the story. So as an actor, what, what you really have to do is to be the most connected emotionally to the place, to the event, to, to having the point of view of what's going on. So 
even with a little bit adjustments from the director, some directions, you can shift, you can do, you have to be moldable, you have to be flexible rather. Um, well, I'm aware um, that you worked as well on theater and on television. So I would like to know if you give the same approach and if you apply the, the, this technique the same way to all of these areas or because I mean the character is the same everywhere, but maybe um, there are different kind of performers and with different different kind of education and preparation and even what you said about the breath, I mean, um, I know you've also worked at um, Cirque du Soleil and with this kind of performers, even singers, um, how do you apply this technique um, in these different areas? I believe that uh, performers in theater or Cirque du Soleil, for example, uh, have to actually work in the space and they have to perform every night, sometimes twice a day. So uh, phys uh, their physical demands are much, much higher than in film. So what we have to do is we, for example, with Cirque du Soleil, we went there, we, we watched their performances and uh, we, uh, we, that's where the collaboration begins that we heard from the directors and the trainers what were some of the problems uh, in terms of the injuries that were coming up or the level of energy that was lacking. So uh, what, what, how we work with them is to maintain an ease of movement, an ease of performance to find how can you do the whole choreography with the least amount of effort. And then to repeat it night after night after night. So that becomes um, uh, a strong issue. Uh, this fall I'm going to New York. There's a new uh, Broadway musical opening in, on Broadway called King Kong. Comes from Australia and uh, I'm going to work with the uh, movement a choreographer and the, uh, the puppeteers that move this very big puppet. Uh, of King Kong and uh, which is he's great so we're gonna work on that and but it's very demanding and it needs coordination and uh, and uh, I, I am sure that they're already feeling the effort and the tiredness that making the show work uh, so, so we're working with the demands the physical demands that you you have to use on stage uh, so that's uh, that's different than film because film it's about creating a character for that performance and then once you've done that scene it's done. Um, and I would like to know if you got um, another current or future project you would like to share. Well. Um I don't know if it's still in the theaters, but I, I was in uh, The Red Sparrow with Jennifer Lawrence in the last movie, um, which is a very interesting <laughs> character that I play, and I used very much an animal because he is an animal, uh, very um, uh, economically and physically and all, whatever you, you can say, um, a lot of energy and a lot of power there. Um, so it was very, very helpful. Um, I just, um, I think, um, booked in, uh, I'm going to be in the movie of Steven Soderbergh, which is uh, about the, I think it's called The Laundromat, and it's all about Panama Papers with uh, Meryl Streep and Gary Oldman and Antonio Banderas. So those things are coming in, and I'm very excited about that. Yeah, and there are a few things I just, uh, for the television as, as well, we've done um, um, kind of, uh, it's going to be in, in, uh, released in, in, at the end of, uh, of the year with uh, Chris Pine and, uh, and some other people. So things are, are, are coming together, you know, it's the beginning um, of, uh, of the season in, in us, in Hollywood, so after the vacation everything starts coming in. <laughs> All right.
things are going well. <laughs> and yeah. what about you? Um, you got something you would like to share? Uh, let's see, two projects. One is a new Quentin Tarantino's um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So again, I was working with Margo. Margo doesn't do a film without working with me. So she, she's um, playing Sharon Tate. So we worked with that, and that was interesting. And then towards Christmas, uh, she is in Mary, Queen of Scots, and I helped her with uh, the Queen Elizabeth. So that was a really interesting character uh, to work on. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of projects, and I'll be in New York working on a few plays. Well, congratulations to both of you. And at last, um, do you have any advice you would give to the young actors and even directors? Uh, yeah, definitely. It, it, is, it is a very challenging profession to be a director and an actor. And whatever that you can do to begin really working on becoming more self-aware of what you're doing with your own energy. You don't have to study the Alexander Technique, but uh, if, you have, if you have a way of bringing yourself together through meditation or yoga or uh, any kind of work that will make you more aware of your habits, then that will help your work as a director and as an actor. Uh, and uh, the breath, I, I, I agree with Christoph that people are not breathing enough. Uh, it's a problem. It's uh, worldwide, you know, that we're all feeling stressed out. Uh, there's a lot, there's plenty to get us stressed out in our lives, yes? And uh, we need to uh, be clear about ourselves first and then be able to help others and then tell your story. What about you? Well, um, it's um, acting, it's, I mean, you know, it's so interesting. Uh, I come from Europe and I've been in Poland and I lived in Italy and then I moved into um, to the United States. And um, everywhere it's not that easy to get in. Sometimes it happens all of a sudden, right? But those are like winning the lottery. I don't know, you know, it's, it's a lot of work. And work, what I am, as I'm getting older, it's not about tensing your muscles. It's not about screaming and yelling and, uh, you know, it's not about that. It's really about allowing life to be experienced through your body which means what Jean-Louis just said, you know, be connected to yourself in such a way because anything comes and everything, it's a, an expression. If you, are, if you are a director, you have your vision that has to go through your body and come out and you're looking at those uh, uh, in, in, a, in, a, um, um, in, a, in a camera and you see if it's happening as an expression or not, but, but who you are and understanding who you are and exploring with yourself and be available and allowing yourself to have the experiences, be curious as well at the same time. All of that, it's kind of, it's like painting, you know, you, you, it's a white canvas, then you kind of take your mixture of, of paints, right? And you put something on it and you step back and you take a look and maybe something else, or maybe at some point you decide, mm, I don't like what it is, I'm just gonna cover it with yellow, you know, <laughs> and start all over again. Patience, you know, patience, uh, curiosity, and everybody has stories to tell. This is so important. Mexico is at the center stage right now, so uh, <laughs> Viva Mexico. <laughs> Viva Mexico. Well, wow. it, it's, it's really nice you found this here in Mexico. And well, thank you very much for your time. It, it was really nice to meet you. Thank you. Y bueno, hasta aquí concluye esta entrevista que podrán ver posteriormente en la página de la Universidad de la Comunicación. Muchas gracias.